what we're going to cover in this chapter is the overview of the compensation package compensation and job related reports we're going to see and uh, look at how we can set up the eligibility rules how do we apply them for uh, individual workers what are the elements of compensation what are compensation grade and what is a compensation plan and package so as we discussed compensation is an umbrella term which covers the package uh, eligibility uh, elements grades plan and packages it's an umbrella term uh, when we refer to compensation so let's see what are compensation packages the compensation package is a group of compensation grades and compensation plans the combination of all compensation components here are in a package using compensation eligibility rules enables the system to default those compensation into its employees compensation during staffing activity when you create a plan you must add it to your package the below is an illustration to help you show how compensation components such as compensation package or compensation plans are linked to payroll our eligibility criteria such as job family, uh, job profile, management level, organization, country, location, et cetera, set up or defines the base of the eligibility rules criteria. So a combination of these or some of them define the rules of eligibility. Then the eligibility rules define what is available for that particular worker. So a composition package may have salary plans, merit plans, allowance plans, bonus plans if it's any hourly plan that's also part of the compensation package then maybe yield salary plan commission plan stock plan period salary plans then grade grade step and grade step profile depending on the location of that uh, step profile and all these combined into compensation elements then you have earning codes and then finally into payroll. For example, as some of you are moving from say New York to California, um, not much of a cost difference, but for example, if you're living say in Houston and your uh, housing allowance say about $2,000 per month or $1,000 per month, and if you move to New York or California, that thousand dollars per month would not make much sense. So depending on the location of uh, where you're working and the company policy accordingly, uh, a housing plan for uh, Houston could be say a thousand dollars, but a housing plan for New York or for San Francisco could be about fifteen hundred dollars for the same job rates or job profile management level. So when you have to do location-based uh, differences between the compensation, that is when we use a grade profile. You can, when you make the changes to that worker, you can either choose the same date, earlier date, future date, or next pay cycle. And especially say, for example, you have a conveyance allowance for New York, because you have to travel by underground or travel by train or travel by bus uh, because vehicles are quite expensive to operate within the downtown city. Or maybe you get a vehicle parking allowance or something like this. Any kind of allowances or any additional changes that you may want to have based on the location of the employee or based on the location of your office. If somebody moves from one place to another and say maybe one country to another, in the same job family, job profile, management level, uh, organization, country, or maybe country and location could be different. Same everything, same uh, job grade, same management level, same job profile, same family, but if the, say the location is different, and if you cannot, or if you're not managing it by job profiles, you can have uh, great profiles for such activities. Generally, we use grade profiles for different countries where currencies may be different. 
where the pay rate, uh, pay rates may be different. So generally, the pay grade profiles are used for different countries. But in case of US, and if I give the example of US and say uh, Houston and New York, and there might be some differences on allowances based on the location, that can be managed through grade profiles as well. We look at a few examples and we'll see how it looks like. You can have a bad day uh, change in job profile, in position changes, in job changes, um, in pay changes as well. But for example, for a business process, you can have a backdated business process. It has to get current or future dated. Okay, got it. So, a composition structure includes composition grade and plans which are grouped into a composition package. Plans can be set up as percent, amount, or unit base, and it can be configured to allow override at the time of hire. Compensation eligibility rules can control the compensation component for which employees are eligible. Compensation can be populated during staffing events, uh, staffing activities using default strong positions or through eligibility rules. Let's uh, visit our tenant and see. How does it look like? Let's look at our compensation. Let's say run this report. I don't want to put an effective date, so all the compensation plan which are active. So on this end, there are about 61 compensation packages available. So let us look at our thing for a moment. So if it's management that shape is being assigned. So there's a compensation package called management. It has its set eligibility rules, which is right here. Package name, description, effective date. Somebody made changes to this plan yesterday. So what kind of compensation grades it has. And the eligibility rules are same as uh, above. What are the compensation plans that are associated to this compensation package, like mobile allowance, car allowance, allowance management? This is specifically for Japan. Set by eligibility rules. So if the worker's location is Japan, then and part of the management and based on this eligibility criteria. This person may get the Japan allowance, Japan family allowance, international housing allowance. If the eligibility rule for this particular plan is if somebody's on an international assignment, married salaried is people who are salaried and not fixed term. Salary is for salary composition group with exceptions. International assignment salary on international assignment. So there are two kinds of international uh, plans. Then bonus, Australian superannuation, stock, period salary, security, seniority allowance, Mexican vacation plan, premium, Mexican 30 months, EV savory, E contribution. So let's look at this eligibility criteria. So the basic eligibility criteria to be even and be eligible for this management plan, the criteria is, and these are and conditions. So the this has to be uh, working. This rule has to be working together. So all these three conditions has to be met in order for the management level uh, compensation to be attained. So it says management level compensation relationship operator is any in the selection list. So value specified in this filter means value of management level compensation. And the selected or comparison value are director, manager, or vice president. If the management level is either director, manager, or vice president, then they would be eligible for the management compensation package. The second condition or the combination with the second condition is and. And compensation group in the selection list, value specified in this filter should be salaried. And here you will see a parenthesis, which means this is a singular group of rule. 
So these two has to match in order for these two conditions to be, or the first condition to be acceptable. The second set of condition or the second condition is job family and job family group for compensation. None in the selection list, where you specified in the filter. So if any of these employees or workers are in sales, direct sales, sales management, inside sales, sales operation, or sales, sales support, they would not be eligible for this management package. So directed sales, whether he's salary, he would not be eligible for this management level compensation rule. So I could have an and and or condition here for all of them. And for example, if I would like uh, with the parenthesis, I'm making a group and a combination of two conditions or two rules to make it into one unique value. If I say and management level, any in the selection list must be director, manager, vice president, or their, uh, their salary. So it will be and an or condition, but then either of the two condition must be met in order for this uh, rule to work. But when I have and 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 condition, it means a combination of these two conditions together must be met. So when I need to have more than one condition to be part of the same condition rule, like a multi-step condition rule, that is when I use the parentheses or the curly brackets. So by these uh, brackets, these two conditions are together tied up as a single condition. So it has two kinds of logics in it. So one is the management level and the second is compensation group. So any of the employee who is either a director, manager, vice president, and is salaried would be eligible for this condition, pass this condition. And this is for this compensation package level. So who is eligible for the management compensation level? We just look at it. So these basically two sets of conditions. One is management level and a salary, uh, salary group must be met. And the second part is they are not part of sales. Now, when I look at the plans, it has their own eligibility rules as well. So it's tiered eligibility rule. First, they, uh, their eligibility for the compensation package. Second is the compensation plans that may be available to that particular worker. So here, job family, field direct sales. The compensation rule is job and job family group for compensation. If they're part of sales, direct sales, they would be eligible for this mobile allowance or the second eligibility rule, or the third eligibility rule, or the fourth eligibility rule, or the fifth eligibility rules. So any of these eligibility rules, for example, let's open location US to Canada, New Zealand and Australia. So the first rule is either countries New Zealand, that's just a field, equal to specified in the filter, yes. So either if they're either New Zealand or Australia, then the first, set of rule applies and the time type of compensation is full time. So if they're full time and they are either in New Zealand or Australia, they would be eligible for this mobile allowance compensation plan. So allowance family Japan. So if I look at the eligibility criteria for this, the compensation rule is all countries of location for compensation, any in the selection list, will you specify the filter and the compensation variable is Japan. So if the employee's location is Japan, then they would be eligible for the family allowance in Japan. So bonus management, for example, let's look at its eligibility criteria. So if somebody is on a fixed term contract or the source field is fixed term contract is equal to no, then only then they would be eligible for this uh, compensation bonus management. But that's not it. It has more conditions. They're all and. 
So the second condition is management level, director, manager, vice president, and compensation group is salary. These two conditions. And the third is that they should not be part of sales. So when the combination of all these four conditions are met, because they are all with and conditions, only then the bonus management compensation plan will apply to the worker. So this is specifically for country in uh, of France. So if it says country France equal to specified in the filter, yes. Either employee or a contingent worker or a contractual employee, contingent and contractual are synonyms. So it says out of the two, they're only available for regular employee. And collective agreement compensation, say there's a code for comparison value and say, it is for most probably 12, 15. So it's an eligibility rule. Location is Paris, Lyon, or Nice. And it has a classification factor. So you can have a combination of rules and conditions that you can make as part of your eligibility criteria, either for the uh, higher level on the compensation package and on the individual compensation plans as well. Now in compensation grades, these are some compensation analytics that you can show within the compensation package. For example, when uh, I open up Logan McNeil, when I go to compensation, what values or what information is visible here can be managed by say display total base pay range, yes, yes. Display total base pay range segment is not selected. The display primary compensation basis range is not selected, so it won't show. Display primary compensation basis range segment is selected here. Display midpoint. Guidelines warning based on total base pay. Whenever you're doing a, a plan assignment, do you want the guideline warnings to show up if it's out of range? The value that we are putting. So guideline warnings based on primary compensation basis, height, comp per ratio or high competition package analytics. So you can set, set up these rules. Let me go to the compensation plans now. For example, so what does a salary plan constitute of? So it has the eligibility rules, applies to people who are 100% full-time employee. Clue from merit is set up as no. If I look at the base pay, included in the composition element is standard base pay. And it is available for these 102 compensation profiles. Click on standard base pay, composed of the following two composition elements, so included compensation element groups, so composed of composition element. Generally, the compensation package, you can see all these information, the grades you have set up in them, the comp plans, their particular plan level eligibility, and the compensation package main eligibility rules as well. Hello, Sam. Yes. What's compensation basis? Uh, we'll look at it into a different uh, package plan and we'll go through it. Give me one moment. If I look at an hourly compensation group, then I can select or uh, put a condition, say job profile is hourly and select it to yes. So anybody whose job profile has an hourly uh, pay time, they would be eligible for this hourly compensation group. If I look at the hourly compensation group eligibility, yes, we saw that. If I look at the compensation grade, these are the compensation pay ranges A to 25, A to 25, A to 25, A to 25. So it has total base pay, total pay hourly on target earnings, and total compensation. And here in my eligibility rules, the job profile is hourly selected, yes. Unions active is empty. Anybody who is part of a union would not be eligible for this hourly not union composition grade. Now, if you remember, I was talking about grade profiles. So here, uh, my first grade pay profile is for Australia. That's the name of the grade profile. Grade profile is Australia hourly, standard base pay elements, eligibility rules, Australia and not union, currencies, Australian dollars, and the frequencies hourly. Here you will see two pay ranges. First is going to be in Australian dollars, 20 value. And the second is the currency converted to the 
top level hierarchy of your organization, of your company, which is currently in US dollars. So when you have people working in multiple countries and they have different great profiles, they would see their compensation packages in the local uh, currency, but for the reporting and for tenant access, Workday does the conversion rates for you based on the input that is being fed into Workday, either by yourself or by a third party provider, which uh, inputs the conversion rate on a fixed frequency basis. So it could be by weekly, daily, monthly, whenever the conversion rate is being refreshed. These rates will continue to show that the main currency based on the location, it will show the local currency and then conversion into your headquartered or the main company's currency value as well. Again, okay, there's a second grid profile for Australia. Then there's a grid profile for Canada. So you'll see the values in Canadian dollar and below that you will see the value in US dollar. For an organization that has the headquarters in, let's say, UK? Yeah. Um, how will the pay range look? Is it going to still be against the US dollars or against the pounds? No. The second value is the currency of your headquartered or the main company location. Okay. So if it's okay. headquartered out of UK, mm -hmm. so for this, the primary value will show in Canadian dollar and the secondary value will show in British pound. Similarly, they have a great uh, profile for China, Denmark. ERA metal electricity, that's a different great profile. This may have different eligibility rule like Bavaria. Collective agreements based on a specific German location. Yeah, so it's restricted to Germany and then it has its classification value factors. And collective agreement composition Byron, EG4, and step A, step B, step C. So depending on the country's uh, location and the specific values that may be the basis for the eligibility criteria, that can be set up in great profiles as well. So for Finland, it'll show the primary value in Euro and the, uh, the local value in Euro and the primary value in US dollars. So another way to you Compensation plans. So if I run this report called Compens, first we look at compensation packages. Now, if I'd like to see all the plans that are available in my tenant. So these are all the 36 salary plans set up on my tenant. Okay, let me open salary in a new tab. Eligibility rules, salary composition group with exceptions. So let's open this rule. So when somebody has a job profile that has salary selected as yes, so they'll be part of this. Location of employee type, France apprentices, it must be no. So if anybody who is uh, who has this kind of France apprentice marked, they will not be included. Location is to the guard, collective agreement ID metal in area is baden Württemberg or something like that. So it is not specifically eligible for these two people even though they are salaried. And here you will see a derived logic that will give you a kind of a statement based on the rule conditions that you have created. And again, applicable to 100% full-time employee and exclude from merit is no. And it is part of the compensation base pay element. Now, if I look at, say one more plan, salary the competition element has changed to international pay and the eligibility rules are is tagged as an international in the assignee if that is yes then only this rule will be applicable similarly in addition to hourly salary plans these are the list of my hourly plans so it will give me a detail, what is the compensation element, amount, currency, frequency, minimum wage, yes, no, yes, no, eligibility rules and used by which compensation package. If I have any unit salary plans, they can be set up as well. If I have period salary plans, they can be set up as well. 
right? There are all the details depending on your company and the locations that you're trying to manage. If you have these specific requirements, they can be set up. Your allowances plans can be added here. So allowance car, allowance family Japan, holiday, allowance home office, allowance mobile, uniform, super orientation, car allowance, child allowance, executive housing allowance, internet allowance, mobile allowance. Next is a unit allowance plans. So if you have any uh, plans based on units, you can do that. Number of units, so AU bags, two bags annual. Or flip card allowance plan, SK, cost per day. TM fuel allowances, cost per mile. Then comes the merit plans. So merit for salaried people, merit for hourly people. The bonus plans, so bonus for executive, say it's defaulted at 40%. Bonus Global Support UK, it's 10%. Bonus management is 10%. And you can have multiple bonus plans with their percentages, uh, the compensation element, the default frequency, their eligibility rules, and what compensation package they are being used in. Similarly, you can have commission plans as well. Commissions or incentive, target amount, draw amount, frequency, eligibility rules used by compensation packages. Then stock equity or equity plans or stock plans and set them up as well. The grant type is RSU, PSU, limited liability, the frequency, the stock category, the vesting schedule, expiration date, percentage of target. Then again, there are your eligibility rules and which compensation packages they can be, uh, they are currently assigned with. Any future payment plans, they can be set up as well. One-time payment plans, referral payments, like if you refer somebody in the company, maybe you get a one-time payment, that can be set up as well, like a gift card, Marriage gift card, severance, sign up bonus, spot bonus, standard referral. So if you have any kind of one time payment plans, you can set them up as well. And if there are any calculated plans, like seniority allowance, we saw that minimum wage for Syntec collective agreement, max 13 month, Kiwi saver, apprentice salary. So, what compensation element they are part of? plan type, calculations, default currencies, frequency, eligibility rules, and used by which compensation package. So this report gives you a very in-depth idea of what you have set up or available in your tenant when it comes to compensation plans. So we look at the compensation packages, we've looked at the plans that are available or that can be configured. We've looked at the eligibility rules. We have studied some of the great profiles that we have set. So we've looked at composition grades and plans, we group into a composition package. Plans can be set up as percent, amount, or unit-based. So your bonus plan can be percentage. Amount is, of course, a currency. Or number of units, like based on kilometers, or based on units, or based on miles. We have studied and looked at different eligibility rules for hourly, salary, location-based, job profile-based, and we have seen some German rules as well, which they have very specific configurations. And compensation can be populated during staffing activities. So when we start hiring and creating positions, we will look at this point as well. So there are some uh, standard reports for eligibility, compensation eligibility reports. So let's look at these. So compensation rule assignment. So all employees as per this has compensation grade, grade profile, and the compensation plan is KOW salary plans. So if I look at this for compensation rule country of United States, these are the grade profiles and these are the compensation grade. And I don't have any specific compensation package United States. 
So if I want to see which rules are assigned to which grades composition package and grade profiles and what kind of composition plan I have, I can use this report to have different rules that I can look into. So you should want to execute the USA 5 and these are the grade profiles under this plan, under this rule. Employee compensation audit, that's the next report. Say I select organization, say global or TMS. And say I want to include subordinate organization. And if I have to apply any specific filters for say assign components, I can select them. Employees with assigned component types. Say allowance, bonus, calculated commission. If I need to filter any of the these information, I can do that. Or compensation components to exclude that don't include those compensations, I can do that. So I just selected the, my top level organization, include subordinate organization. I'm going to run this report. So I have my, in this report, I have my employee name, employee ID, the position, supervisory organization, who's a manager, who's HR partner, so assign eligible composition components, assign ineligible component, unassign eligible component, composition components. So here I can see by each employee, what has been assigned in the compensation information. And if I need to read on this report, like say with some of the variable changes, don't include car, mobile. See, don't include these in my report. So now in my assigned eligible compensation, those allowances for car, and these compensation plans to exclude will not be included in the report data. And other report is called compensation spreadsheet. Again, I select GMS USA. I want to include subordinate organizations. So here for, I have more details in this report. So employee ID, employee name, most recent hire date, position, compensation package, grade, grade profile, then compensation range minimum, midpoint, maximum, total salary and allowances for this particular worker, total base pay, market position, primary compensation basis, the currency frequency, compensation ratio, base pay segment name, primary compensation basis segment, range penetration, compensation plans, elements, assignment details. So all the four plans or five plans are set up here. So Jamukhi, you had asked what is a primary uh, compensation basis? So when you need to set up a time frame for that compensation to become effective. Like for example, above Q4, Q3, Q2, and so on. So when you have some kind of basis you want to set up based on maybe a time range uh, or a quarterly basis, like the example here is used for Q4 or above Q4, Q3, Q2, and so on. So when you're working with compensation, these reports really come in handy to give you a snapshot of what is going on. So let's look at another report, compensation changes report. All the information about compensation changes that has happened to employee in this supervisory organization like Global Modern Services Limited Canada, employee ID, position, supervisory organization, compensation change event, what is the effective date, date and time completed, status, reason of the change, and what changes has happened in the compensation and the currency and the frequency as well. So the current and the proposed information is here. So for example, I want to use this standard delivered or an advanced delivered report from Workday, which is uh, delivered as a standard from a Workday. 
and I would like to make some changes to this report. I would like to use this as a basis of my report and I want to add some more information to it. So first thing what I would need to do is I would need to be added to the security group of say report writers. So if I'm part of the report writers group, I can create new reports or edit existing reports. And as this is a standard report, I cannot edit this report. So what I can do is a standard report. I can make, go to the related actions on the report name, <clears throat> go to standard report and make a copy. I can make a copy of the standard report and it'll convert to say, PS composition report. It has now converted from standard to advanced report. Now I can make changes to this report. If I need to add more components, more fields, more business objects, I will explain this in more details once we cover our reporting module or reporting chapter. So you can sort, you can do filters, you can apply sub filters if you need to amend your prompts, you can set them up, output formats, who is it shared with, you can share it or don't share it with anyone or you can share it with specified users or specified groups and the advanced parameters for, yes, now you can modify the report, but you cannot modify the standard report. Okay. But you can make a copy of this and use this as a baseline for your analytical report that you would like to create. Okay. Again, the primary business object is employee compensation event. And these are the available data sources for this primary business object. So you can choose either of them. So here we are currently looking at compensation changes. But if you'd like to see all employee compensation events, you can specify that and have a broader spectrum of data. Because reports are made for specific purposes. If I want to create a report without having a thought process as to what am I trying to get, uh, get information out of this report would be in vain. So reports are generally made to satisfy a specific query or a set of queries. So based on that, you select the data source and the primary business object for your reports. And then you dive into the business objects. You can have combination of business objects, and then you can have the fees of those particular business objects that you would like to run the report on. So can I have multiple business objects? You can have multiple business objects, but those business objects would be under this data source right here. Okay, I will cover this later on when we come to the reporting module in okay. details. But just to give you an example, I can go add a new row. I can I look at all the available fields or I can go by category. New hmm. column for that report. But for that column, I can have a specific business object and the related fields under that uh, business object. Employee compensation event. That's going to be a primary business object. Two data sources in a given report. Okay. As a standard format, but you can create calculated fields such as LRV, such as extracting a instance, and bring in data from other data sources as well, within this report as well. Mm -hmm. okay. But we'll discuss that more in detail when we come around to reporting. Sure, probably I have a, maybe a different question. Probably I'll cover it when we get into the reporting section. Otherwise, we'll spend the next two days uh, discussing reports and their uh, requirements and how we can manage reports. And believe me, reporting is a, is a very interesting area. Another report that we can run is directory by job. I want to select all job profiles or say I want to select a specific job profile. I can do that or let's run it for all job profiles. So here I'll have my organizations, the positions, workers, the phone number, public email addresses and other details. So which, where is this job profile being used? what position it's, it is being used under, and the worker, their phone numbers and email addresses. Again, this is a standard report. If I need to use this as my basis, I can make a copy. Another report is job catalogs. It'll give you a complete snapshot of all the job profiles that you have in your tenant. The job profiles, what job family and family group they're part of, 
You've got job profile ID, the summary, the management level, is it exempted? Like if it's uh, hourly, it will be job exempted. Job classification group and compensation grades that this, uh, the, the given job profile name. View composition grade usage. Next report. I'm not sure what is going on with this report. But this should give you all the composition grade usages that you may have. Grade profiles, employees in this grade, employees not in this grade, employees in composition set, employees with an in-progress event. And say I can select Shimada executives and it'll give me the details of the compensation grade or pull up the compensation grade for me, which is five Shimada executives. All right, I think.